we're going to start this chapter by talking about some algebra that you're probably very familiar with, and we're going to talk about solving linear equations. So I gave for you here the definition of a linear equation in one variable. You can see it's defined as ax plus b is equal to zero. I know this is a linear equation because the variable x is raised to the first power. It's the only variable in this statement. The a and the b both stand for numbers. So that's the kind of equation we're going to talk about solving. In this first example, you can see this here is the equation that we're going to tackle. So what do I do first? Whenever you're talking about solving any type of an equation, you first want to simplify both or either side of the equation. And so in this particular case, to simplify the left-hand side, I need to distribute my 4 and get rid of the parentheses. So when I distribute or multiply into, this, um, into the parentheses here, 4 times 2x is 8x plus 4 times 1, which would be 4, equals bring my 29 down, and let's do the same thing here. Distribute this 3 so that I can remove the parentheses here. I would get 3 times 2x is 6x, and 3 times that would be negative 15. So I've gotten rid of the parentheses in, in my equation, and the next thing I want to do is I want to try and simplify the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Um, I cannot do anything further with the left. I can't combine these two terms over here, but on the right-hand side of the, of the equal sign, I can combine my 29 and negative 15 because they're like terms. So that's what we want to do next. 8x plus 4 is just going to come straight down, and 29 minus 15 is going to be 14 plus the 6x that I had. It's at this point when I have both sides of the equal sign as simplified as, as I can that I now want to combine variables on the same side. So I have x's on both sides of the equal sign. So I am going to choose to move this 6x that's on the right, and I'm going to subtract it to the 8x that's on the left. Now I choose to do that only because when I subtract 6x from both sides, it's going to give me a positive 2x. If you had decided, and there's nothing wrong with this, but let's say I wanted to subtract 8x and combine it over here to the right, and I wanted to gather all of my x variables up over here on the right, there's nothing wrong with that. I would just end up with a negative variable to then work with. And I don't like to do that, so I'm going to have a positive variable on this side. Let's bring our 4 down equals 14. Now that I've got my variable, on the left-hand side, I'm going to subtract 4 to the right, giving me 2x is equal to 10. Now, remember, we're going to divide by the coefficient of my variable. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and I find out that x is equal to 5. Now, at this point, this is probably some algebra, like I said, that you're pretty familiar with. What did I find? I found that there is one number, 5, that when I plug it in for x is going to cause the left-hand side to be equal to the right. Okay, and that would be the solution to this equation. How can I check my solution if I, uh, if I want to? What can I do to check my solution? Well, we can represent this equation graphically using our graphing calculator. And the way that I would do that is I'm going to look at this side of the equation as a separate function, and we're going to call it y1, and I'm going to look at the right-hand side as a separate function or a separate equation, and we're going to call it y2. So I'm going to go to my graphing calculator, and I'm going to put this first equation in the y1 and this equation in the y2. Let me show you what that looks like because I've already done it. So I have my graphing calculator here, and let me make it a little bit smaller for you. Okay, so now I think you can see my screen a little bit better. This is the uh, my TI-84 graphing calculator, um, and we're gonna I'm gonna show you how I would graph those two lines. So if I went to the y equals up here, notice that in the y1 position I have typed in that equation that was on the left-hand side of the equal sign, and here under y2 I have 
the equation for the right hand side of the um, of what we were looking at. Now I can go to my um, to the graphing button and I can hit graph. Now I have a window set that's outside of the range for what I wanted to look at so I want to show you how to get it back to something so I can see what I was doing. Um, a quick way to reset the window is to just go zoom and we're going to choose standard. So zoom and I'm going to choose the standard window which is number six and it's kind of resetting the window on my calculator to something that I should be able to see and you can see it's graphing one of the equations and it's going to put on here another equation in just a second. There it goes. Now at this point these two lines look like they're parallel so I don't really know what am I looking for to know whether or not my answer was really five. What I'm looking for is the intersection of these two lines would intersect at exactly one point and the x coordinate of that point should be five. So notice that if each one of these ticks here along the x-axis stands for one, if I go one, two, three, four, five along the x-axis, that lines up with, it's outside of the range of my window. So what can I do? Well, let's see if I can make my window just a little bit larger. So I'm going to say window, and it's the y values that I need to adjust. So I'm going to arrow down to the y values and I'm going to set my maximum to be at, um, we'll go with 50 and I'm going to make a scale. I want to see every fifth, fifth tick mark so we'll try it that way. So now what is my graph going to look like? So you can see here that my two lines are intersecting at some point. In order to verify that they intersect at an x value equal of 5, we're going to go ahead and we're going to find what the intersection of these two lines are. So we do that by doing second, trace, choose intersection, which is option number 5. It's flashing on the blue line, so I say yes, that's the first curve. It's on the red line, yes, that's the second curve. I don't have a guess. and the intersection indeed is occurring when x is equal to 5. And that tells me right away if I wanted to verify whether or not the algebraic solution that I found was correct. So um, algebraically this is what we're doing and graphically if we were to put these into the graph what we are finding is that um, the solution to this equation is where those two lines intersected. Now I want to show you one other thing and that is in this particular video, this introductory video that we're looking at. You saw me use the graphing calculator, the TI graphing calculator to find the intersection of these two lines and I want to show you one other option. So another option that you have uh, when you're talking about graphing functions is to use an online source called Desmos. It's completely free and it's very user friendly when I'm trying to just verify things or check something out. And You can find this at desmos.com. I encourage you to check it out. Now over here you can see that I have the first or the left hand side of my equation which was 4 times 2x plus 1 and I typed that into this um, into this bar here and then I typed in the right hand side as y equals the right hand side and every time I try to type something in see I could say y is equal to 1 and it's going to graph something for me but I'm going to get rid of it for you right now. Over here in the window Remember, this is exactly what my graphing calculator looked like. Just two lines that I really, I can see that those are two lines there, but I don't really know what all is going on. So let me make that a little bit bigger for you there. So the thing that I like about Desmos, though, is if I want to kind of investigate these two lines, I can do it really easily with my mouse. So instead of adjusting the window on my graphing calculator, I'm simply going to roll and I'm scrolling using my mouse over here in my hand and I can adjust and I can see that sure enough these two lines do intersect. I can't quite tell because the scale on this isn't, um, isn't great right now and that's a really easy fix. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to adjust the settings 
and I'm going to change the y axis again to be between, uh, let's just change it to be, uh, we'll go negative 10 to the 50, and I can do this using my typewriter, which is a little bit more user friendly than, um, than the, um, than the calculator. And then here I'm going to change this to be between negative 5 and positive 5 along the x-axis. Oops, we better go to 10. Get rid of that. And now you can see that they're intersecting. Well, where is that? The intersection, and I just scrolled on this with my pointer, this intersection which snapped to, Desmos automatically snapped to that intersection point tells me that yes, the 5, oops, I got rid of it, the 5 is the x value for the solution that we were looking for. Okay, so that's a lot of information for you in this first video when really we're only looking at solving um, a, a very simple equation, but it's going to get us on the right step as we move forward.